Hello YouTube, in this video I am going to show you some tricks and tips for basic network troubleshooting. As the caption says at the bottom, I have no internet, what do I do? What is the most common issue? First I'd like to say this is for home users and beginners in troubleshooting customer grade home networks. Enterprise settings are very, very different. And I do mean very different very different. <clears throat> the most common issue I've seen in the 20 years I've been messing with networking equipment and troubleshooting home networks is the cabling problem. In later years when home routers became more common, the second biggest issue has been a hung router. I mean hung as in the router's locked up, all resources on the router have been exhausted and it can't process packets for routing anymore. The third most common issue is the Wi-Fi was turned off on the computer. This is very common with laptops. And the fourth most common issue is configuration problems. What is a network? A network is a group of devices all connected together by various media that allow the devices to all communicate with each other either locally, known as a local area network, or over a great span of distance in a wide area network, which is a WAN. You have LANs and WANs. The internet is considered a WAN. That is a very massive wide area network, spans global. The entire world is under the internet. There's also a very close range local network known as a PAN, which is a personal area network. A PAN is most commonly used over Bluetooth. There are some other ways that PANs work. Uh, some of them are RFID. Most common one in home use is Bluetooth. Each of these three different types of common networks work together to tie in a multitude of devices such as printers, computers, servers, phones. All of them can connect directly to each other in a means in which all can communicate with one another. These networks can also tie the devices into the internet if properly configured. Yes, that does mean everything you have on your network is capable of connecting to the internet. Networking devices are hardware devices that help propagate network traffic to its destination or to monitor network traffic for security. You have routers, some with Wi-Fi built in. You have switches and you have access points. These all help connect systems to the network and propagate traffic. A hardware firewall, intrusion detection system, or an IDS, and intrusion prevention system, IPS, could be installed on the network to help monitor traffic for security reasons. So what is a router? First, let's start with the most common name brands for home routers. Cisco or Linksys, which is made by Cisco, Netgear, and D-Link. Now, this is what they may look like. This E3000 right here is a very common, common router found in most homes. This is the older style Linksys, which is made by Cisco before they started going strictly with the Cisco name. These were the most common ones back in the day. These right here, not so common in most home networks unless you have someone that is really wanting a network device that has really good performance. A router, also called a gateway, is a network device that connects multiple networks together so each separate network can cross communicate. You must have a router or a gateway to be able to connect to the internet. This ability to connect networks together is the reason that your computer can get on the internet as it connects your WAN to your LAN. Some of the routers also incorporate their own built-in wireless access point. That is the wireless network that you are on most of the time with your phone or laptop or various devices. In which the device can connect to the network via various 802.11 wireless protocols be it A, B, C, G, or N. Wireless N is the current standard today. Each protocol is capable of different transfer speeds and run on one of two different wireless frequencies. A and AC both run on the 5 gigahertz range and have different transfer speeds with A running at 54 megabits per second and AC running at 1300 plus megabits per second so it goes up into the gigabit range. B, G, and N run on 2.4 gigahertz 
range and have different transfer speeds with B running at 11 megabits per second, G running at 54 megabits per second, and N running at 150 plus megabits per second. If you have a well properly configured N router, it's fully capable of 300 plus. All home routers also have DHCP servers built in which automatically assign IP configurations to the systems connected to the network either by a network cable or wireless. A switch is a device that forwards network traffic to its destination and device. This is what is a switch. Some home networks are big enough that they may need a 4 port or an 8 port switch on their network. The router ties directly into the switch so that all devices connected to the switch can connect to the internet. All devices also connected over these will be able to cross communicate. Most switches are very fast in receiving and forwarding traffic information and can also help span your network over a little larger distance. Most houses that have ethernet ports in the walls have a switch somewhere that directs the traffic to those lines if a device is connected to them. Switches do not handle connecting different networks together or wireless connections. Wireless is entirely the job of the WAP. That's the wireless access point. Connecting different networks together is entirely the job of a router or gateway, or also known as a gateway. A router and gateway are pretty much the same thing. Switches look similar to a router but function differently. How can I avoid network issues? There are several tricks on how you can set up your home network to avoid a lot of issues. First off, plan your layout where your router is centralized as centralized in the house as possible. Make sure your router is up high. The higher the router, the better you're going to get signal across to all the devices. Do not run any network cables close to fluorescent lights or microwaves. Fluorescent lights and microwaves will cause a lot of problems with your network communication. It also generates what is known as network chatter in which you have false bits running down the line because it's actually somehow propagating a positive charge into your cables. Do not place a router inside of a closet or cabinet. You do not want it to be enclosed where it can't freely communicate. You have to remember that 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz rely majorly on line of sight with as little of interference as possible. Make sure all cables are out of the way. You do not want people tripping over them, kicking them, or having to unplug them to be able to clean properly. And most importantly, make sure to research the router configuration and make the changes appropriately so it is configured correctly for your needs. Router configuration. Before making any configuration changes on your router, make sure you write down or somehow log what the original configuration was so if your changes do not work, you can go back and fix it. Also, make sure to use Google and research how to factory or reset your router in case you can't get back into it at all to fix the issue. If you're not sure how to configure your router, Google is your best friend. You can also download the manuals and see how to set up the router for use. It's always best to make sure you configure your router's wireless access point to use WPA or WPA2 encryption. Make sure that you use a strong WPA passphrase that isn't easy to guess. You don't want to use your telephone number, your address, or something about you that anybody and everybody can easily guess. You want it to be something difficult. All router configurations should be done over a wired connection to the router and not wireless. The reason being is it's very easy to lock yourself out wirelessly where you can't connect back into the router to do the configuration changes. Your internet connection ties into a WAN port and any computer or device connected via the wire goes to a numbered port 1 through 4 or 1 through 8. This means that the internet connection itself, there is a port on there that is labeled as a wide area network or WAN and that is where your connection from the modem plugs into to tie in your internet connection to the rest of your network. The rest of your Ethernet ports that look like the big phone jacks, they're called RJ45s, will plug into the ports that are numbered 1 through 4 or 1 through 8, depending on which one your router has. And if all else fails, call your local computer repair tech to come out and set it up for you. They will supply you with the WAP or WPA key once they configure it so you can get your wireless devices on the network. 
common issue right here. I've heard this one so much. I have no internet. Well, here's what you need to do in basic network troubleshooting steps. If your network suddenly slows way down or stops altogether, remember KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Check to see if other devices on the network can connect and get on the internet. If they can, odds are it's probably just a single cable on your computer. Check cables and make sure nothing has come unplugged from end to end. That means you're going to check the computer, follow the wire all the way to the router, check the connection on the router, see if one of the two have accidentally come loose. If it's wireless, check to see if the wireless has accidentally been turned off on the computer itself. This happens an awful lot on laptops. If that doesn't work, reboot the router. Routers have a small finite amount of RAM used for the system and the processor to perform its functions. With logging turned on, that RAM fills up very, very fast and there are a lot of them that are configured from the manufacturer to have logging turned on. This means your router is going to be rendered unusable relatively quick depending on how much your network is used. Check the link, likes, link lights on the network ports if you're using network Ethernet cables. If you're using hardwired cables, if the link light's not lit up, you have either a problem with the cable or it's unplugged. The light should be on and should be blinking. Reboot your modem. The modem is a device that connects to the internet. If you reboot the modem, if everything can't connect to the internet, you reboot the modem and all of a sudden it can, guess what? Your modem was hung. If all else fails, contact your internet service provider, your ISP, to see if there is an outage or a problem on their end in your local area. If there are absolutely no issues and all this has not taken care of the problem, call your local repair technician to come out and check out your system. Let them know everything you have done to troubleshoot the problem. They will be able to better work with the ISP and see if they can get the issue resolved. Keep in mind it is possible that after advanced troubleshooting it ends up being on the ISP side anyway and they will have to come out and fix the problem. If you feel comfortable doing advanced troubleshooting with ISP then don't hesitate. Don't call your local repair tech. Pick up the phone, call your ISP and go for it. They'll walk you through what you need to do step by step. Which is exactly what would happen if a repair technician was at your house working on your system. If it wasn't something simple on the inside, something to do with the system itself, anything to do with any of the network devices, they're going to call your internet service provider and they're going to walk through everything with them step by step. Thank you for your time. I know networks can be a tidbit confusing, but for the most part, the home network systems, mm, they're pretty basic and as far as it goes for learning your router go ahead and tear into it you can do a factory restore on it if you get it to the point that it's not usable this is the best way to learn how the device is configured and make sure everything's working properly you can go in and play with it if you get the settings to the point where you lock yourself out do a factory reset it goes right back to exactly the way it was whenever you first purchased it and you haven't really lost anything now you can connect back up and start playing with the settings again this is what I highly recommend to everybody as the easiest way to learn what your device is, what it's doing, and how to configure it, and how to save the changes and make sure that they're applied to your system. This allows you to be able to go in and customize your WPA key. This allows you to set up the system. This allows you to set the IP addresses that you want. I mean, it, it, there's a lot you can do right there, and you really can't hurt the device. You can't brick it just by making simple configuration changes. You can render unaccessible, but that's an easy fix. This information is out there for absolutely everyone. As always, watch, like, and share. Have a great day.